One thing that I think we're all starting to realise is that male allies can have such a huge impact on women's sport. Male allies in the women's game are hugely important and always welcome. And like you say, a giant like Hugo Monya being a very active ally for the women's game is, is huge because he's a kind of person, no matter what he's talking about, people sit up and listen. So I'm Hugo Monnier, former rugby player here at Harlequins for 14 years. I also played for England and the British and Irish Lions. It's not an understatement to say that, that rugby changed my life and we don't have enough time to get into all those details, but it genuinely did. My daughters are four and one and a half, or just about. I hope that by the age when they're able to make their own decisions, become teenagers and get exposed to lots of different sports, that the route into whether it's rugby, tennis, football, whatever it is, I just hope they have a positive experience. We have a great game, but if there's anything I can do to help better it, to help promote it, to help get more visibility, more eyes, inspire people to get involved in it in any way, then, yeah, I definitely want to be that guy. It's easy to assume that only girls follow us, but actually boys and men follow us too. And it's becoming a bit more socially acceptable for men to come up to us and say congratulations. I think sometimes they might feel a bit like, oh, it's a bit weird, like following women's sport as a man, but it's becoming a lot more normal, thankfully. The most important thing I would like any male associated with, with sport or with rugby to know off the bat is that their voices are needed in this conversation. I also think that the way the world works right now with the way our social media algorithms work, for example. A lot of people are existing in bubbles that never ever talk about or discuss women's rugby. And I can shout as much as I want and they will never hear me. If a male player or a male administrator or just a male who's, who comes across this and, and understands the significance of it, if they lend their voice to the conversation, those are ripples in a completely different pond that I can't reach. I don't think it's overly complicated. But I do think because we live in this, every time you speak out about something, you are woke, I think that tends to then be a barrier to men speaking out because they don't want to be called that. I've been called it, whatever, like brush it off. Obviously, I would never ask anybody to say anything that they didn't believe in. I think it's important that the male voices that we hear in this conversation are genuine and that they, they mean what they say because you know, we don't need any more posturing in this community, that's for sure. But it's important to understand that not only do we welcome them into this conversation, but we need them in order to reach places that we can't reach, no matter how much we try. So one person who's really helped me along this journey has been Sue Anstis, and she is a phenomenal human being. She's also a force of nature, and I love her relentless attitude. She puts women's sport front and centre of every agenda. She's been a great ally to myself in order for me to hopefully be the best male ally I can for women's rugby. She's a boss, like. <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh. It often surprises and slightly disappoints me that we don't see more professional footballers and rugby players and so on perhaps calling out the negativity we see on social media, having someone retweet some content or a quote actually can be hugely powerful in terms of changing perceptions. And, and those men who are in that well-respected positions actually can make a massive difference for women's sport. I mean, having Sue involved in the documentary was almost a no-brainer. She needs no introduction. She's an absolute powerhouse of women's sport, and she really understands what has happened in other sports that can translate so well into rugby. In terms of investment in women's sport, I think in the past it's been a bit of a worthy, something we ought to do, it's the right thing to do, and more and more sponsors are now seeing there's huge commercial value to be investing in women's sport. And I think sometimes we feel that fans of women's sport are just women, but it's not just women that watch women's sport, men and women watch. However, there is also this opportunity to tap into a huge fan base that perhaps hasn't followed much sport in the past, which is women and families. And, you know, women make up 70, 80 percent of decision making in terms of purchases that are made within the home. So women are really powerful.